Браво, окей. И сте ети ми, начи сме. И ме сте ети ми. Браво, се съкрещуваме пара полис. Я ти проти си не дехси ти сме олеас, ти са хепас австралиас. И ме сте поли перифеники е харумени, не хуме тин кирия бакояни. Хулефтис протон Афинон. Прой пургос ексотерикон 2006-2010-ти скивени си с карамали. Прой пурго политизму ти скивени си с мицотаки и ни да дио и ни да трия, ке про димаркос Афинон 2003-2006-ти. Кирия Бакояни, кали спера ти канете? Има кала, кали спера ти пара поли херме, кумпилао с ти неолеа, ти неелиники, ти са стралиас. Ке ми скироме се пара поли ефхаристо и афтин тин ефкерия, ке... Емис влепуме ти орео керо ехите еки сте на Тина, ке се оли ти на лада, ке каноме та скеде ја нагирисуме, ке акоми мја фора. Ена сте кала, се спериненме банда ме поли агапи. Евкаристуме, евкаристуме. Прота, мисус Бакојанис, 8 јез ago, as mayor of Athens, you presided over a city and a country full of hope and pride. As host of the 2004 Athens Olympics, Greece opened its door to the entire world. As new members of the Eurozone and of the European Union, Greece had just embarked upon a new era of globalization, part of an exclusive club of countries which propelled the purchasing power of millions of Greeks. In 2006, as Foreign Minister, you led a proud government of a shining country, a beacon of, Europe of Europeanization, who was part of the UN Security Council and President of the European Council. Today, Mr. Bakoyanis, we hear about riots in Athens, protests, strikes, poverty, even famine, and record unemployment beyond 25%. And those who do work can barely survive. My question to you first of it today, what has brought Greece, modern Greece, from its record highs to the edge of abyss? Well, it's an old story. I'm afraid that uh, for the last 30 years, practically after the dictatorship, Greece started uh, on the wrong foot. Practically, we borrowed money, uh, we lived beyond our means, and the Greek people were used uh, to, uh, to increase their income every year, but nobody asked how this increase was practically produced. So the political system in Greece, practically with all of us, are responsible that in trying uh, and being afraid of the so-called political cause, we uh, overborrowed, overborrowed, and now today we have to deal with the biggest debt in, uh, 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 in the European Union. So now we have a very, very tough fight in front of us. Now we have to prove to the European Union that we will be able to make all the reforms which are necessary. We need the solidarity of our European partners, of course. We have to change radically, mainly our mentality. So uh, it is a very, very difficult moment for Greece. It's a very difficult moment for the Greek people. But we have proven historically that uh, uh, Greece can always catch up and um, uh, at the end of the day, like Churchill said, win the last battle. And the last battle is the most important one, the battle which we have to, to give for our great people today. Uh, very well saying, Mrs. Bokinyanis, and I note that um, you recently emerged your Liberal Party, uh, Democratic Alliance, Democratic Isma here with the centre-right a Nea Demokratia, to present a uni united front for the general elections. You have been a keen proponent of austerity measures on, and of enforcing these changes, and like you said, of winning this last battle for Greece. But why is there, and has there been such a resistance in Greece towards liberalism and towards these changes, not just over the past year since the bailout, but since, for example, since the end of the Junta days? This is the main problem. You know, in Greece, uh, uh, we say sometimes we won the civil war, uh, but practically we lost the ideas. So Greece became a country where everybody expected, maybe after 1981, everything from the state. 
Speaking to a young person from Australia, it's very difficult to understand his mentality. But unfortunately, this was the truth. So now we have to change all that. So the resistance is big that the people in unions do not agree with that. The people who are used to, to live from the state, of course, don't like the idea. On the other side, there are many people who are rising on the streets because they lost their job. But 1.2 million persons lost their job. Even today, that I'm talking to you, are all from the private sector. So the public sector, who was the main um, reason why Greece uh, uh, lost the case, is even today, after two and a half years of crisis, untouched. The, the, the public servants lost, of course, part of the salaries, but the reforms which are necessary have not been made. I, I understand, Mrs. Bokoyani, then, um, but uh, recently, just at the end of last week, at the IMF and World Bank Summit in Tokyo, uh, the IMF chief, Christine Lagarde, said, if people, and she was referring to Greece here, if people stay away from the job market, they lose hope, which is why it is critical that while maintaining those policies of fiscal consolidation, which you talked about, where these are needed, there is also concern for growth so that jobs can be re recreated. What is, um, amidst all this social spending, the horizontal cuts to the special salaries, to the pensions, uh, to the military now, for example, in the latest cuts that are about to happen, what is the Greek government's plan for creating jobs regardless of European assistance? Well, let me just say that uh, with, with two and a half years later, uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, the responsible person from the IMF in Greece, I stated yesterday that uh, they should not uh, focus so much on the cuts, but they should focus on the reform. I'm sorry to hear that, because that was what I was pleading for the last two and a half years. And I told them many times that you are wrong, uh, gentlemen of the Troika. You are trying to cut everything. But at the end of the day, this will just build up the recession in Greece and will not produce jobs. Jobs will be produced by the reforms. When people feel secure that, first of all, they can make business in Greece, secondly, that Greece will stay inside the European, the Eurozone, which means that it will be a stable, uh, a stable situation, and when people can have confidence in the Greek economy. So these are the three uh, prerequisites for Greece uh, uh, to succeed. And I'm very sorry to say that the Troika made also many mistakes in Greece. So now they realize that we are at the end of, of the road. Now they realize that this is like, as this is like I said, we have to, to, we need two more years. And of course, we need restructuring of our debt. Uh, this is a question which our European partners um, will be dealing with. Uh, but first of all, we the Greeks have to show that we are determined to proceed with the reform which are necessary. So you said, Mrs. Bakoyanis, that you've been warning about the Troika, about overestimating and being very positive with their forecasts. And I just refer. When, uh, when Greece first embarked upon the bailout in May 2010, uh, the forecasts by the IMF were that once implemented the austerity measures, Greece would return to economic growth this year, but next year will be the sixth, the sixth year of recession in Greece. Uh, and the basis of Greece entering the bailout, would you say great, Greece entered the bailout on false grounds led astray by the IMF? No, Greece entered 